slide, we want to start solving the problem in a simple way just to illustrate the idea. This is not going to be the way you're going to solve problems when you come to solve problems in the homework or an exam. It's just to illustrate the idea. So the problem says we have an arc of a circle uh, which, with charge. This red part has charge and it lies on a circle. And just part of the circle has the charge where the red part is. And the radius of the circle is R. And we want to find the electric field at the origin due to this charge. So just to illustrate the idea, we're going to cut up this arc into four parts. Now remember, if we use the equation for a point charge for this element of charge, it's only an approximation. It's not exact because this is not a point charge. This is a large piece of arc of a charge. So by using this equation, we're, it's an approximation. It's just to illustrate the idea. It's to give the quant qualitative aspect of the problem. So the charge is delta Q1. It produces an electric field at the origin. The electric field points in this direction if the charge is positive. And uh, if this angle is theta 1 and the unit vector from the element of charge to the point where you want to find the field is r1 hat, then the electric field can approximately, if we use the point charge formula, to be Ke delta Q1 over r squared r hat. Same thing we can do for uh, delta E2 for the second element of charge. And remember again that this is an only an approximation because this arc is not a point charge. So this is just to illustrate the idea. Same thing for delta Q3. We can get the electric field it produces by using uh, the formula for a point charge. And the same thing we can do for delta Q4. For delta Q4. Now, if you put all of the electric fields due to all the elements of charge on the same plot, you can see that in this simple idea, simple problem or simple way of solving the problem, we, we need to add these four vectors. Now, remember again that we cut this arc into four parts only just to illustrate the idea. If you want to do the problem correctly, you need to make the size of each element approach zero so that we can be justified by using the equation for a point charge. So in, let's just look at this illustrative uh, problem to start with, that we have four vectors and we need to add them. When you add vectors, you have to add them as vectors. You have to add the X components together and the Y components together. So how would we get the total electric field then? Let's get the X components first. So let's take delta Q1 and let's see what its X component is, delta E 1X. There's a minus sign because if this charge is positive, it will make an electric field to the left. And so, so if delta Q is positive, the delta EX1, E1X should be negative. And if the cosine is between 0 and 90, this is positive. So if delta Q is positive and the angle is less than 90 degrees, then this negative sign is important to make the sign come out correct. And again, remember that this equation, we can only use it exactly if we have a point charge. So this is an approximation. We can do the same thing for delta x2. We can do the same thing for delta x, uh, delta e a 3x. We can do the same thing for delta e 4x. In principle, if you want to find the total electric field in the x direction, you need to add these four parts, and this is what you would it what it look like, like a summation from one to four minus k e delta q i over r squared cosine theta. Now, this is just to illustrate the problem. Remember that there is no, we can't cut up the arc into four parts. We cannot do that because the, the arcs that are cut up into four parts are not point charges. So we cannot use Coulomb's law uh, kq over r squared to get the electric field. This is just to illustrate the idea. Now, let's do the same thing for delta E1y. So let's get the y component of the the element delta q1 so if this angle is theta 1 then the y component you multiply by sine theta and there's a minus sign also for the same reason as before if this charge is positive and located in the first quadrant then it should make a negative uh, electric field it should have a negative y component of electric field so the negative sign is there for that purpose same thing for delta e 2y same thing for delta e 3y same thing for delta e 4y and if you want to get then the total electric field in the y direction, you just add up all these y components. You can write it in uh, summation notation as sum from 1 to 4 of this quantity. Remember again 
that this these this these equations can only be used for point charges and these four arc lengths are not point charges so this is just to illustrate the idea if you want to make the problem exact and so we can put an equal sign now we have to make the number of elements go to infinity so we sum from 1 to n and let n go to infinity and the number of elements and this will then give us the correct exact formula because then we are justified in using the equation for a point charge how do we solve this problem we don't want to solve this limit of sums it's very difficult to solve the limit of sums so we want to, to convert this into an integration to convert it into integration we need to change the summation uh, the everything in terms of one variable so we, here we have delta q here we have theta and here we have n so let's write delta Q in terms of delta theta. How would we do that? We know that the charge, the arc length, uh, the charge on the arc length is the charge per unit length times the arc length. And from geometry, you know that the arc length is just the radius times the subtended angle. So then we can substitute the de delta Q by lambda R delta theta. So this is how we got rid of the delta Q and we arrive, we have now everything in terms of delta theta and theta. And the same thing we do for the limit here. We can make this limit when delta theta goes to zero because when the number of elements goes to infinity, the size, the angle subtended by each element will approach zero. So these now are the exact formulas that we should use to find the electric field for the X component and the Y component of the electric fields. So when you do this uh, limit of sums, if you don't want to solve the limit of sums, you can just notice that this can be written exactly as a definite integral. You have here the minus, there's the minus. You have here the Ke, there's the Ke. You have here the lambda, there's the lambda. There's the delta theta, there's the d theta, there's the r, there's the r, and the cosine theta, and there's the cosine theta. So this definite integral you can it will give you exactly the same value as this limit of sums of course the definite integral is much easier to solve um, so that's why we can we convert it into a definite integral and the same thing we do for the y component instead of sine instead of cosine we have sine and we get another definite integral for the y component of the electric field now once you got the x component of the electric field and the y component of the electric field then you can get the total electric field by just putting them uh, one in the i direction and one in the j direction. And this red vector then would represent the total electric field due to this arc.